Okay, a number of people using Windows 8 tablets or even desktop uh, laptops have reported some problem in uh, starting up the WAMP activity, especially when they start up WAMP. Sometimes what happens is that uh, they click localhost and they get a message forbidden or when they click localhost, they're able to see the main screen. But then when they click PHP my admin, they again get an error message. It doesn't go to the expected screen. It doesn't go to the PHP my admin screen. Instead, you get an error message. Okay. So if this happens to you, then you can follow the steps that I'm going to outline in this video recording. I've also posted a document on this. Uh, so you can follow this step to, to work around it temporarily. Uh, I know that there are some things you need to do in certain files in Windows 8 installations to prevent this problem from happening. Okay, for now, what I'm posting is just a, a workaround. You'll be able to do everything, uh, but to proceed later on in the course to use everything, you may need to do something else. Okay, but for now, let's just do this. Okay, first of all, uh, your WAMP needs to be running. Okay, so what I'm going to do is to uh, shut down my WAMP first and just start uh, from scratch. Okay, to start WAMP, what you need to do is on your desktop, if your WAMP was properly installed, you're going to see an icon like this, which is a W icon with the shield on, on Windows. Okay, that's the icon you need to click. Unfortunately, the installation program for WAMP also has the W icon. It looks the same. So you shouldn't click that icon. To start the program, once you've already installed it, click the W icon with the shield. So I'm going to double click it then you're going to get this message. Do you want to allow the program? Yes. Uh, once you do that, you will then see uh, in this area, you'll see the W icon. Either you'll see it there. If you don't see it there, click on this triangle and you'll see the W icon there. Okay. So that's because it's a server program. It doesn't do anything that is visible. It'll do visible things only when we try to connect to it from a browser. That's why nothing happens on this. Okay, now, uh, so once you see this and you see the green icon, you know that it's running. Sometimes it may not be green, it may be red. In which case, what you need to do is to click on this and get the pop-up window and then say, put online. Okay, what that does is that, that makes your program open for connections. Otherwise, the server is running, but the server is not in a state to accept incoming connections and therefore even though it's running it will not respond to any requests okay so you have to make sure that it's online so if it's offline it will say put online and then you click on put online and then it should be running okay there are a couple of ways by which you can test that it's actually running one is to again invoke the icon and go to localhost and then you should see this window that means it's running but for some people, I have noticed that when they do that, it doesn't work. Okay, it says uh, application not found. At least I saw one person who was getting that error message. No problem. If that happens, so long as you're seeing the, the pop-up menu, you know that it's running. So then you can just directly go into a browser and type in HTTP, HTTP colon slash slash localhost. Localhost one word, no space. And then press enter then it should work. Okay, so you should see that. So now, normally to invoke PHP my admin, you will just go to PHP my admin and click on it. And the PHP my admin, which is the way by which you connect to your SQL database, my SQL database and work that will come up. But this is precisely where a lot of people are having problems when they click it, it goes to a screen, which shows them it's forbidden or they're not able to access it because it says your your uh, application requires a password or something. Okay, so that's the problem we are trying to work around. So to work around that problem, what you need to do is the following. Assuming that you've installed MySQL, uh, the WAMP, and that you've got your WAMP server running. Okay, so, and it also see when you put the cursor there, it says server is online, which means that it's it's going to serve pages. So click on this go to MySQL and then click on MySQL console. 
okay that will bring up a window like this which says enter password don't enter any password just press enter and if you come to this the mysql prompt here you know that all is well your mysql server is actually running and is ready to respond to comment uh, to commands okay now this window that you're seeing here is a command window which means that in order to get anything done in this window you have to actually type in commands okay so you don't use your mouse to point and click instead you type in commands okay now just leave this window running the next thing you need to do is to download from blackboard the file for uh, uh, the file that contains the complete database description. Okay, I'm going to go to Blackboard and it says database import file for suppliers parts example from lecture. So this is the file you need. Now what you need to do is you need to save this file on your computer. Okay, there's no sense in just clicking on the file. If you just click on the file, the file is going to open probably for most of the people it's going to open in a browser. Okay, instead, what you need to do is to right click on the file and then say save target as. So I'm using Chrome, so I'm saying get, getting a save link as. But if you're using Firefox or if you're using Internet Explorer, then you may get a save target as. Okay, so what you want to do is to save target as. Okay, and then save it in your case into a folder called WAMP under C colon. On Windows 7 it's different on Windows 8 that's where you need to save it so you need to save it under the C drive in a folder called WAMP which is not there in my Windows 7 installation but in a Windows 8 installation you'll see the folder C colon WAMP W A M P so save the file there okay so at the end of that process if you go to that folder and see it you'll see there's this file called spjnew.sql you'll see that file. So once you've saved the file, go back into your MySQL command prompt and then type in the command source source spjnew.sql source spjnew.sql press enter and it'll execute all the commands and once it comes back down to your MySQL prompt then you know that your the database has been imported okay so now the database is imported in fact you can verify that by typing the command show databases and when you type the command show databases it shows all the databases that are in the server clearly I've got a lot more databases than you have you probably will see information schema SPJ new and test those are the three databases you'll probably see anyway so long as you see spj new you're in good uh, you're in good shape okay so this database server has several databases now in order for you to start working with a particular database you need to let the system know that that's the database you're going to be using to do that you type the command use and then give the name of the database the name of our newly created database is spj new well, how do you know that that was the name of the database where the import file contained that name? Okay, so that is how it became SPJ new became the name of the database. Okay, later on, we'll see how to create your own new database and so on. So now we say use SPJ new and then it comes back and tells you database changed. Okay, so now any command you enter will now be executed against this new database. Okay, against the SPJ new database. Now, remember one thing since you have already imported the database into your database system it's there you don't have to import it again it's already there you shut down your machine shut down ram server whatever it is come back the database is still there okay however every time you start up the sql mysql console every time you start it up you have to type the command use to tell it which database to use that you have to do every time but you don't have to import it again once you've imported it okay so now the database is there now you can start typing all the SQL commands you learned in the class you can start typing to see how things work for example I can type in select star from parts now 
Inside MySQL console, you have to end all your SQL commands with a semicolon. Okay, so unless you end it with a semicolon, the MySQL console doesn't know that you finished entering your command and it will keep waiting. Okay, let's first do this, then we'll see. So that's it. So this is listing all the elements from the parts table. And uh, you know from our uh, handout that those are the things which are there in the parts table. So that's good. Okay, now uh, in a short command, it's okay to list it on one single line. What if you have a long command and you want to actually enter it on separate lines? You can do that. For example, I would say select star and the rest of the command I want to enter on the next line. So I press enter. Since I have not entered the semicolon, MySQL knows that my command is not complete. So by showing this arrow, it's telling me, okay, enter the rest of your command. And I'm going to enter from parts. If I still press enter, it's still going to think that I'm continuing because I still have not entered the semicolon. Now I can enter the semicolon. I could have entered it in the previous line as well. Now it knows the command is completely entered. You can then, uh, it can then execute the command and show you the results. Okay, so this is what you're going to do. Uh, now for the assignment, I've given another file. In fact, that file is right here, SQL assignment. It's on Blackboard under introduction uh, SQL week two. And there's another file called university.sql. So to do the assignment, you have to import that database also using exactly the same process that we just followed. Okay, now some, uh, and then you could execute all the SQL commands against that. Okay, some useful, uh, other some other useful commands when you're working in the SQL console would be uh, show databases. Okay, and when you have a current database that is actively working, in fact, you suppose you forgotten which database is active and you want to find out what which database is active, you can type select database open parenthesis close parenthesis from dual. Okay, so if you execute that command, it'll tell you which database is the current database. Of course, we expected uh, our current database is SPJNU, and that's precisely what it's showing you. Okay. Now, given that you have a current database, you can say show tables and it's going to tell you what are all the tables inside the database. Okay. Now, for a particular table, you can also do this. You can say describe shipments or describe, let's say, projects. And you now see a description of the projects table. It's telling you the projects table has three fields, J number, J name, city. And for each field, it's trying to tell you what kind of a field it is. Okay, this is a character, all, all fields are character fields. And it's telling you that this is the primary key, etc. We'll get into all of that later. Okay, so you can use these commands to just know what's going on inside your database. And then of course, you can type in all the SQL commands to retrieve information from the tables. For example, I could say, select, part number, comma, color. From parts. And you get the result. Okay, so that's the whole point about how to use this. Now, one other important thing is that when you're trying to learn something new like this, you're going to make mistakes, right? You're going to miss out a comma, you're going to misspell something, you're going to miss out the select clause, you're going to make all kinds of mistakes. Now, when you make a mistake, the MySQL database will throw up an error message. Now, when you get an error message, don't just give up saying, oh, something is wrong. Read the error message, try to make sense of it. So, for example, suppose I say, select uh, star fro, instead of from, I just type fro, fro supplier. Okay, so then it's saying you have an error in your SQL statement. Check the syntax for the right choice near fro. Okay, so it's telling you that something wrong and approximately where that mistake is, where it finds the mistake, that's what it's showing you. Okay, so you can look at the error message carefully, find out where it's pointing out the mistake and then you can fix the mistake. So you look at this, oh, I meant from, not pro. Okay, or alternately, suppose you say select star from and instead of suppliers, let's say by mistake you entered supplier. 
Okay. Now, why is this a mistake? This is a mistake because there is no table called supplier. The table is called suppliers. So now it says table spj new dot supplier doesn't exist. So that's a clear error message. It's telling you this table doesn't exist. So you look at it carefully, you realize, oh, I mistyped the name. Okay. Similarly, let's do this. Select instead of supplier number, let's just say I type number, comma, comma, color from parts. Okay, so it's saying unknown column NO in field list. Okay, that is, it knows the table they're talking about is parts, but that table doesn't have a field called NO. So that's the error message that you're getting. Okay, so you should look at error messages carefully. Uh, it's a good thing to make mistakes. When you're learning something new, you actually learn more by making mistakes than by just getting everything correct. Because when you see the mistake, try to make sense of it, your brain is working, you're learning in the process. So there's nothing wrong with making mistakes. In fact, it's a good thing. But what is wrong would be to just see a mis mistake and then just give up, throw up your hands and say, Professor, I'm getting this error message. Try yourself to, to solve the problem. That's a big learning experience. Okay, so that's it. That's the workaround for now. Uh, I'll go into the system, explore with a Windows 8 computer. I don't have one handy here. I'll explore with the Windows computer, just Windows 8 computer, just to see what the problem is and how to get around it. I'm sure I'll be able to find a solution. And once I do that, I'll post the solution and all of you Windows 8 users can be back in the mainstream and use it just like everybody else.